Hi, Sandy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kirk. Welcome to the ADK Rock and Metal channel. Now, today we are continuing our journey uh, through the back catalogue of the wonderful Sepultura. Uh, so we have done, uh, we've done Inner Self, I think it was, historically we've done uh, Troops of Doom. Troops of Doom. Yeah. We've done any others or is that the only two we've done so far? I think they're the first two. We're doing it in order, aren't we? From We're trying to. Schizophrenia. So we did Beneath the Rim. Schizophrenia. Air. I guess we're up to now, aren't we? I don't know. What's Dead Embryonic Cells? Oh, it? It? oh no, it's Arise. And then we're doing Chaos So yeah. this song's from Arise. Yeah. Right, we're on Dead yeah, Embryonic Cells from Arise then. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't remember. I thought it was off that one. But yes, yeah, so today, so, so today we're doing Dead Embryonic Cells. So now that we've remembered which album it's off, then we'll be on to the Chaos AD album next. But uh, yeah, uh, we all know this album. We've all probably owned this album at some point. So, uh, but it's one of the music videos. So, yeah, let's go back and revisit it and share our look back, our rose tinted glasses thoughts on this one. Let's go. Emptiness comes here Final memories and the truth 
so <laughs> that album again now. <laughs> uh, let's hand it to Kirk first then for this one. Probably no exaggeration to say in 1991 these were on the verge of becoming the most important metal band in the world. Because just have a look how they've what they've done with Beneath the Remains in 1989. We probably didn't know it at the time, but Thrash is about to enter a period of decline. And you've got Sepultura, who start off as this more or less helped to invent death metal, don't they? And they're starting yeah. to go in the thrash direction. And they, they've already taken over from Slayer and keeping it dark and bestial and even quite evil, some of the, the, the thrash that they're doing. And you've got this real abrasive voice from Max Cavalera. That song, though, is so technical and precise. Rhythmically, it's probably the best song they've ever written. No verse, chorus, repeat in there. There is a chorus, but... I just remember the first time I heard this, I was watching MTV Super Rock. This would have been 1998. And you had to stay up for midnight and you get these videos. And this came on. I'd never heard anything like it. I was like, fucking hell, is this too heavy for me? You know, because I got into <laughs> guitar music through grunge. So it, it is still a big leap to go from Pearl Jam, isn't it, to Sepultura. Oh, yeah. And I'd started playing guitar, but I was just mesmerized by all these modulations in the song, the even the drum fills the guitar melody at the beginning and the extended intro and i started to study it and five years later i was trying to write music like this song that's the, how much the impact it had on me and th this has stood up so well probably is out of the golden era i think that most fans would say this is probably the best album arise and to the even today i review a lot of death metal and thrash metal and bands that merge the two and you really just go into this album to get that sound we don't have a term do it death thrash or whatever you want to call it but this is such a an influential album and then look at the changes after that which will come on to another video you wouldn't think it was the same band that did roots that did a technical thrash song like this with elements of death metal great video it's your classic early 90s video isn't it where they're in front of a sepulchre i think aren't they her over the face like cannibal corpse you hardly ever see the face they look like these evil like zombie type people you know, I don't get, when I first heard this, I never got the impression this is a, a band that are overly political. They certainly did become that later on, didn't they? But quite scary as a 15-year-old hearing this. I was like, fuck, you know, what kind of music is this? Why is, how has this sold, you know, hundreds of thousands of units? Because this is the, this is what really puts Roadrunner Records on the map, this album. This is the big breakout success for that label. I know they've had the Annihilator debut album from 1990, which shifts 500,000, but... Because of this Sepultura album, Roadrunner Records just enters this golden period where every year they're releasing a genre-defying classic. And uh, yeah, probably probably is my all-time favourite Sepultura song, Liz. Andy, what about you? What did you reckon this one, then? You said, Dave, just as we came back to back to screen that you you know you enjoyed it and the, you want to listen to the album again. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I need to because... I realised watching that video how unfamiliar I am with this particular album. I certainly had it on vinyl. I'm not sure I've got it on CD. That goes to show how, how little I've actually sort of accessed it. I can I can hear the title track in my head. Um, the, the, the chorus, as you said, Kirk, and that was only repeated twice. That kind of rings a bell. But the rest of the song in the video isn't familiar to me at all. But saying that, that was one of the best Sepultura songs I think I've ever heard. As you say more technical than many of the other tracks um love that dirty riff towards the end i think you, i think we all <laughs> did that, you know that was stand out as well i mean it's a really really good track love the video as well as you say that classic early 90s metal video different settings uh for the performance element um and then the uh the shot that i like that i've seen many times before where the, the sort of pans across all the members just sort of standing there looking you know, quite morose and, and uh, you know, foreboding, you know, in, in sort of silhouette. So that works really well as well. I love the sepia effects on, on the on the on the video as well. Yes, yeah, definitely one I need to see if I've got, obtain, <laughs> download, whatever you want to call it, because I, I, I've missed this one. I've, you know, I, I don't know why there's the gap in, in, in that early classic Sepultura period for me. And so I know Arise very well. I can sing in my head now. This one, again, was I knew it was a music video. And I know the title. I knew it was coming up, but it just didn't seem as familiar as, as to me as what I thought it would be. But it, absolute bang of a track, and I'm going to listen to it as soon as we sign off. 
Really, really uh, good. Yeah, so for me, love the video. Uh, very much of a Scuzz era TV time for me. Uh, I just remember that in the 90s, watching Scuzz and stuff like that. And probably later in Scuzz, but later 90s. But when they used to do repetitions, I mean, yeah, this would have been this would have been the old MTV2 sort of uh, or MTV generation when this would come on. Um, so, yeah, remember the video uh, really, really well. Um, didn't realise until listening back how much like this this song was slayer-esque in the oh, i should have said that yeah I, I don't know the slayer yeah there is so much from even the barking vocal delivery the way the solo comes in the style of solo is very kerry king the structure of the song is very slayer-esque i was like fuck it out this this if you did if you put Tom Arrier on this, this would sound like a Slayer track. There's, there's not much off of it, which is interesting when you look at the fact this came out a year after season, uh, Seasons of the, in the Abyss. Um, and it's a couple of years before they went off and did Divine Intervention from a Slayer point of view. Yeah, the same year this came out, you've got what Countdown to Extinction came out from uh, Megadeth. So they've gone into a more of a kind of classic metal rock, it had less thrash on it. Uh, although the people say high speed dirt and stuff like skin of my teeth would be class as fresh. Metallica is about to drop the black album. So literally all the core guys that were that spearheaded fresh have moved away from that. And these guys come in and just kind of just smash out of the park. That last riff, that breakdown, the, the, dun, 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 that's got to be on a try not to headbang challenge somewhere because there's <laughs> no way that doesn't come in. You don't all start doing that. It's impossible <laughs> not to headbang to that last part. Uh, it's so much fun. It also reminds me of back from when uh, when this came out. I obviously I was still in school when this came out. Ugh. I do remember when kind of finishing school and people started first learning guitars. Everyone was going for the BC Rich Warlock because everyone was like Sepultura, BC Rich Warlocks. They were the big they were the big guitars at the time. They were the cheap uh, of the big pointy guitars. Everyone was like, yeah, got to get one of them because they're the cheapest ones we can get as well. The basic ones um i just remember that the fact that max was obviously using it i love the fact also was it on andreas kisser's guitar he has a red hot chili peppers yeah they're like, a good band then seriously <laughs> just the faith out, no, did you see the faith no more sticker on the yeah. bass player <laughs> i wanted to point that out to Andy. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I i mean they were literally just taking it onwards they, this was pure fresh this was yeah. They'd taken what they'd done with Beneath the Remains and they'd moved beyond what they'd done with the they still had that death in the previous one. This one they were like, nah, we're going fresh on this one. And then they moved obviously when we get to Chaos AD, you can see where they start to get a little bit more. They let their roots kind of start yeah. to incorporate into the songs. But this one, if you're looking for a fresh album, a rise has got to be up there with one of the best. I know we everyone talks about fresh albums as Rust in Peace or Master of Puppets. I don't know. A rise could be could be yeah. a better thrash album out of all the three. Th th this is really a thrash metal album for death metal fans, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think they knew just how influential it was going to be. How can you when you're writing an album? But to me, their contemporaries still in 1991 are bands like Obituary, Entombed, Death, because Death released Human, don't they, in 91. Yeah. That's where you put Sepultura. And when we get on later on throughout the decade, obviously we'll place them where we think they belong. But this to me is still thrash metal as extreme as it gets where he's still quite scurry you listen to it. it's like andy when you listen to that first sodom album clearly looking back now you could just you, you can almost call it black metal i know the production shy but it's so fucking evil it's great isn't it when you listen to like the, the when thrash first came along possessed sodom creator celtic frost all these bands the, it's evil music and sepultura are still doing that i don't know if they're doing it intentionally but this is not music that's going to be a gateway to anything yeah. beyond i think this is near the end point in 1991 you couldn't get into this uh, wait if you just hear this and you've never heard heavy metal you're like oh fucking hell, i don't know if this i don't know how you respond but that's quite extreme and quite technical that song so i i always think about songs like this there's other songs that we've reviewed as well not specifically today but on certain other days where if a song you would be worried about driving your car on a motorway because you'd end up speeding because you get too into your fuck and you're like shit i'm doing 90 bollocks that's the problem with a song like this you would get too hyped up on it you might slow down for the middle bit but then you might just forget to break completely during the headbanging section in the car like that 
Fuck. <laughs> That'd be great. Two hands on the wheel. Just headbang, smack in the back of a car. Sorry, Sepultura came on. Dead Edinburgh Excels. What can we do? <laughs> Gotta be done. <laughs> Two hands on yeah. the wheel. Image. <laughs> Anyway, there we go. Simple Tour and Dell Embroidery Excels. Now, if you enjoyed our video today, please do like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you on another video sometime very soon. Take care.